So what is Witty Outdoors? Witty Outdoors is a business that my wife and I started, and we make hand-built crankbaits. Uh, we have three models right now. We have a Witty square bill crankbait. It'll run about four foot deep or so. We have a Witty minus one, which is the same body. Just uh, that bait will only go to about, uh, about a foot deep, foot and a half deep. And then the last one is our Witty flat six. So that's a flat sided crankbait and it'll run, oh, about five to seven foot deep. So what makes our baits a little bit different than everyone else's is instead of building ours out of balsa, like a lot of the other handmade baits out there are, is I make them out of composite. So the composite material is 100% waterproof and it's much more durable than balsa. So first we're gonna show you a little underwater video of what the uh, witty square bill looks like. So that's what the Witty Square Bill looks like running underneath the water. It has a good, wide, hard, thumping action to the bait. Uh, something else you'll notice is we do have a one knocker rattle in it. So that is something a little bit more unique. Uh, the other thing that our, our, weight, or our rattle system does is it gives us a weight transfer system. So when you cast the bait, the, the weight will actually go from the front side of the bait back to the back. That way the lure doesn't want to tumble and twirl as much through the air when you're casting it. So the next one I want to show you is our Woody Flat 6. And we got a little underwater video here to show you the Woody Flat 6. The Witty Flat 6, as you've seen, is a, a lot tighter of an action. It still has a decent little thump to it, uh, but it is a much tighter action than what our Witty Square Bill is. Uh, the bait is the same size, so from the nose to the tail, they're about 2 and 1 8 inches long. Uh, the weight of the Witty Flat 6 is about 3 8 of an ounce, so about the same as like a Bandit 200, something similar to that. Um, again, the Witty Flat 6 has the uh, one knocker rattle and that weight transfer system in it. So that does make it much easier to cast than a lot of the other really lightweight flat-sided crankbaits out there. Um, I'll take this one and I'll throw it on a bait caster without too many issues. So the last bait I want to show you is our Witty Minus One. And I gotta say this one's probably the funnest I think to throw because a lot of times when I'm throwing it, I'm holding my rod tip up high and I'm having that bait just wake right underneath the surface and make that bulge right underneath the surface. And I fish a lot of river smallmouth here around my house and when them river smallies come up and smoke it, they absolutely annihilate it. So check out this short video, a couple of uh, good catches that I had last year on our Woody Minus One crankbait. Look at that tank. He ate it. Ooh, there we go. Oh, it's a giant. Come here. Look at that. Gotta love it when them river smallies come up and smoke that bait. It's so much fun whenever they do that. Uh, I like to do that if um, if you got a day when maybe the bass aren't coming up and hitting the whopper plopper, or maybe a day when the bass aren't wanting to come up and get a buzz bait, that witty minus one 
will absolutely get them to eat right then. So if they come up and kind of nip at that buzz bait, you can throw that witty minus one with a couple treble hooks on it. If they come up and nip at it, they're probably going to get stuck. Speaking of that, we do use Mustad KVD Elite Triple Grips. So it's a short shank hook. Uh, I use a number four on the front, number six on the back, and that is the same across all three of the baits. And the one last thing I want to show you is I told you at the beginning, our baits are more durable than balsa. So we take our witty, our witty square bill model, the regular witty model, and let's just say we put it through a little bit of a durability testing. So check out this video and tell me what you think of that. Hey guys, it's Brad with Witty Outdoors. Come down to the river with us today and see just how durable our Witty square bill crankbait is. You haven't ever seen anything like this. Woody Outdoors. How durable is your square bill? We just took that one and hit it with a bat. Dude, how awesome was that? We just took our Woody square bill, smoked it with a softball bat. So you guys can see they're going to take a beating while you're out fishing them. Uh, if you have There you go. Ever seen someone hit their bait with a softball bat before? Uh, last year at the East Tennessee show, we had uh, one of our witty square bills tied on, and I had it tied on a little dowel rod with a piece of uh, braided line to it, and I was taking it and showing people, cranking that thing against our uh, table in our booth for four days straight, and didn't break one of them. So the durability is definitely there, just an extra selling point for our baits, but uh, I'm going to jump on live now and I'll be here to answer any of your questions and uh, we'll probably show you a couple more of, uh, of our colors. So hang out and ask away. It, that was awesome. Um, you know that, and, and you're absolutely right, that, you know, really shallow water, that minus one running crankbait is, is so much fun to fish. I think that's a bait that not a lot of people fish it enough. You know, they, they think it's been around, you know, forever, you know, in, in that style of, of really shallow running crankbait. And not a lot of people fish it. And uh, very underutilized. Yeah, one of my favorites to throw. Yeah, I love it. Um, like I said, I fish our, uh, our local river here, has a lot of smallmouth in it. And I mean, you know, I'll throw it over six feet of water, and those smallies will just come up and crush it. But also early in the year, if you got a lot of shallower lakes with uh, like lily pad fields and stuff like that, when those bass come up early in the year and, you know, those lily pad fields might only be two foot deep. You don't want something getting down there and digging around in all those roots where you're going to get hung up and everything. And using that minus one style uh, really shines there, too. Yeah, especially, you know, a lot of our southern lakes that have pad beds, you know, they, of course, they die off here in the wintertime, but they yep. there's stems and the roots and everything are still there and those bass use that as you know because it absorbs the heat this time of year when it's cold and and they get in that stuff and they root around and that that presentation right there is killer especially like you know uh lake you fall in alabama or anywhere you know in florida if it northern florida if it happened to get cold or georgia uh some of those aquatic lakes that, that have some pads that's a great technique for for utilizing that type of cover too yeah, and even that with uh, hydrilla lines and stuff like that before that grass gets up and gets matted over, uh, that minus one over the top of it is uh, is money there too. I know I got some some guys over on the Potomac River, and they love that minus one crankbait for fishing just above those wheat beds. Yeah, yeah, and that that's a good point too because that you know that's tidal, so that water yep. is going to change all throughout the day. So there's going to be times when you know you can't throw a bait over that grass. And there's also going to be a time when there's just a tiny bit of water above the grass, just enough where it makes it really hard to throw other conventional baits. You, you can't really throw, you know, your square bill in there or, or the or the flat side. You need a different tool to be able to get because there's only maybe an inch of water. So that that minus yes, one is, is is a really good tool for doing a lot of different things. Yeah, with our minus one. Um 
if you hold your rod tip up, I fish a lot on 17, 20 pound mono. And you know, the seven foot rod, if you're holding your rod up, it's only gonna get down two inches, three inches. I mean, I'll keep it to where it's actually pushing awake during the whole cast. And then if you need it to get a little bit deeper, you can, uh, even on like 17, 17 mono, if you stick your rod down, it'll get down to about a foot. And then if you need to get just a little bit deeper than that, I've used it on 12 pound fluorocarbon and then it gets down to about a foot and a half or so. so right. Awesome. Uh, Sandy's that, in, yeah. Sandy's chiming in with a question and I have a, I have a follow up to this question cause I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued now. She's in what depth, would I need for Lake Gunnersville in February? And I and I'm I am actually fishing major league fish and I am gonna be there in February fishing an event. I wonder uh if, if that's gonna be a coincidence or not. So <laughs> um what would you what would you suggest from, from your bait line that you want to throw? I haven't fished Gunnersville much in February, but if I would think that, I would think those fish are probably gonna be closer to that three to five foot depth range uh, for the ones that are starting to pull up shallower. So I would probably go with the normal witty square bill. Um, and then the other thing would be is if you're wanting to fish some more of those lead in banks, maybe, um, maybe then I would go to the flat side. That way it would get down to that five to seven foot range. So if you're fishing some of the gravel bars or something like that with the lead in banks, uh, going back in some of those sloughs, um, probably would think about the, uh, the witty flat side then. Woody flat six. But if you're yeah. looking for getting up shallow already in the weed beds, I would probably go with the square bill. Awesome. Yeah, my suspicions were correct. Sandy's gonna be there for the uh <laughs> for the MLF event Toyota series. I, I kind of figured that much. But yeah, Guntersville is an interesting place, you know. It, it's yeah. You, you, yeah, you're gonna need something that kind of looks like that. And uh it, <laughs> It's a unique place that you know you can catch them in two inches of water too. You know that time of year, I've I've had some really really good days on that lake, and, and you know the lakes also changed a little bit over the years. What you know the eelgrass that's getting in there and the aquatic vegetation changes a little bit. It's changed those fish, but um, you know they still act like they do everywhere else. And you know if the weather stays stable, that's going to be a really really fun event to fish. Yeah, I bet. Uh, so so. Uh, Brandy's chiming in. Uh, what is the best color to use um, with the minus one? And I'm going to tell you, don't give her too many of your of your secrets. Um, Brandy's my girlfriend, um, and 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 I tell you a little. She's very sneaky when we go fish. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, you know, she's in the. I'm, I'm running the front of the boat and she's back there chunking all around and all of a sudden I'll, I'll look back and she's all bowed up and she's got a you know a, a five pound bass on and, and she just she doesn't say a word about it until I look back there and the thing's jumping all over the place and uh, usually when we're fishing tournaments together she'll catch the biggest one she'll catch the first one or the last one so uh, well maybe you ought to give her give her some secrets there I probably need a little help fishing some of these team tournaments. Give her all the secrets uh, you want. My favorite with, uh, with really the minus ones, I lean more towards shad patterns myself. Um, so like just our standard shad. Um, right there is just a standard shad. The other one, I mean, of course, your uh, sexy shad colors. We call that one our Sarah shad. Named it after my wife. So, you know, got some good brownie points on that one. And then the other one is, is right after the spawn. Another great time for that minus one is right after the spawn when the bass start looking around the bluegill beds. So I'll throw that bluegill yeah. one right after the spawn whenever they're really keyed that, in on it. Those yeah, are kind of that, my- That bluegill my, pattern too. Yeah. Yeah, I like that little bluegill yeah, pattern. That bluegill it's pattern, around. it's tough to beat in a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah, I've won some money on that one on the Ohio River too. So right after the spawn happens and those, blue, those uh, bass kind of switch over to to getting on them brim beds, and uh, sometimes that'll do it. Yeah, but in, in the fall too. October October's a good time to fish that. Yeah, more of the dirty water. I start leaning towards just the uh, chartreuse and black. Um, but for the minus one, normally I'm imitating shad or some type of a fish. So a lot of times I'm doing a shad pattern of some sort. 
or uh, the bluegill. Awesome. And uh, Sandy's got another question about ordering the red one. How do we order? Like, okay, folks want to come and, and check your baits out. How do they get a hold of you? How do they order some stuff? Yeah, the best way to order is right through our website, which is wittyoutdoors.com. Um, we got a web store set up there. Um, I keep everything up to date for if I got it in. Um, right now, I do have uh, I do have more of the flat six and the red crawl. Um, I got another couple of red colors. One of them is a hot crawl, which is the same color as this red crawl, but instead of the red belly, it's got the orange belly. So it's still got the kind of the red back, and then it fades down to an orange belly. Uh, right now, I'm actually out of that one. I'm working on getting another batch of crankbaits done for it and getting that restocked too. Uh, but you can see what we have in stock on our uh, web address there. We also got our, um, I got an email address, contact at wittyoutdoors.com. If you want to email me with any questions or anything, uh, reach out to me. And then uh, I'm actually working on putting a little more videos up on our YouTube page. Uh, I got some of our product videos on there and then uh, updating with a little bit of fishing videos when I can. Yeah, a little more about our baits. I mean, they're all, all made right here, just south of Dayton, Ohio. That's where we're located at. Um, we start with a block of material and end up with the finished product that you see there. Um, really the only thing that we buy and put right on the baits is the split rings and hooks. So everything else we're, we're making all of it.